good day to you all. I'm truly sorry that I can't be with you in person for this most important occasion. But I'm greatly encouraged that so many of you from the world of finance and big business should invite a naturalist such as myself who would be lost in the complexities of your affairs to speak to you. There is one subject that is going to affect every single one of us, and that is, of course, climate change. I grew up in Britain. As a boy, I yearned to see the glories of the tropical world, the mysteries of the rainforest, the jungle, the unbelievable beauties of a coral reef, nature at its most complex and glorious. And nowhere are these beauties and wonders more evident than here in Southeast Asia. The Coral Triangle, the global center of marine diversity, and the rainforest, which is the oldest in the world, dating back to 70 million years. And when I got here, I was not disappointed. I came here nearly 70 years ago and these wonderlands were exactly like that. But since that time, they've changed. They have been dreadfully damaged, and I have seen it happening. Borneo has lost its rainforest at a faster rate than anywhere else in the world. 30% of it has gone within the last 40 years. Thailand and Vietnam, over a similar period, have lost half their mangroves, and in consequence, their coasts and the cities built on them are losing their protection against tidal waves and storms. But the natural world is a source of more than just beauty. It provides us with every mouthful of food we eat and every lungful of air we breathe. Our health and our survival is dependent upon it. And yet we continue to destroy it. That is sheer folly. But these losses are not irreversible, not yet. Nature can recover if given the chance. Mangroves can be replanted. The rainforest can spread back into areas where it once flourished. Coral reefs will regrow if allowed to do so, and with a speed that will astonish anyone who's not familiar with the underwater world. And cities themselves, the home for so many of us, can welcome back wildlife and help it flourish, as Singapore, the city of nature, is now demonstrating so dramatically. Rainforests can still help to regulate world temperatures. Urban green spaces can help cool our cities and reduce the risk of floods. ASEAN has played a central role in this recovery and must surely continue to do so with even greater determination and vigor. It's within your power to do even better. Humanity working together could even now stabilize the global rise in temperature to below two degrees and so avert a major worldwide catastrophe. I'm truly delighted that the UK, as president of COP26 in partnership with Italy, is calling for urgent action to put the protection of nature and diversity at the very centre of climate policies. If we are to live in harmony with nature, we need a world in which every financial decision takes climate change into account. Financial markets have the power to put us on track 
to meet the Paris Agreement's targets and at the same time be a source of growth. As we come out of COVID-19 pandemic, we must surely strengthen these efforts and build back and build greener. All of us, no matter who we are, have the responsibility to care for the planet. The future of all humanity now depends on us and on none more than you in the world of finance. You have the fate of the whole world in your hands. Thank you very much for listening to me and I wish you every success and wisdom in your deliberations. <laughs>